Hey guys, welcome to another session of TNC or Tips and Change. This is episode two. Episode one, I think I got a lot of feedback and uh, thank you guys so much for watching it and, you know, just letting me know what you guys think about the series. Um, I think there is definitely positive feedback and there's definitely a uh, appetite for that kind of content. I'm actually more surprised than not. Um, so I'm going to continue on the series and give you guys like, you know, tips and tricks on, you know, what, what I feel are you know, important to the player. I, I, I apply these things, all these things I'm telling you guys to myself. So hopefully it just, it, it works out for you as well. If you guys have any suggestions on what you want me to cover next, please leave it in the comments down below. I'll obviously in my regular schedule, um, producing videos and stuff like that. Uh, I might not be able to get to every single one, but if there is something that, you know, I see as a common trend, like people are struggling with some specific topic, I'll do my best to make a video on that. In this episode, I want to talk about friendship farming. So in like, if you've been playing Epic seven for a while, um, and you followed like the kind of like the QO, QOL changes, the quality of life changes, uh, that, that smog is implemented. The game is in a very, very good position, a lot better than it was like, let's say a year ago. Um, mainly when RTA was introduced into the game, uh, there, there became a struggle between like you know the the people who could afford to buy packs to get mola to buy packs to pull heroes um uh, mola gora for skill enhancement became an issue especially when the five stars especially the ml five stars uh are predominant and they're so influential in the game so uh people didn't want to spend that mola into a four star hero thinking that you know four star heroes is just gonna be kicked to the curb um, and even if they get a dev buff, they won't last for long. So like, for example, like Ice Corinne, although she's good for like farming Wyvern and probably not the best anymore. Uh, she takes Mola, uh, Fire Shuri has a pretty decent kit too, with this really high speed imprint. No one really invests in him unless you have done it in the past or you're memeing. Um, but people like who want to stay with like the five star range, it becomes a tougher thing. So Smogget introduced a new system, a friendship farming system. So let me just bring this up. Um, friendship system where like originally we always had the friendship, but it only gave us more uh, expressions for the hero. So like unlocking it is just like, oh, if you really love that hero, you're going to unlock the friendship. But then uh, Smogget implemented where that if you get uh, to level 10, you get three skill points now there this this became sort of like a uh, it, it's a good and bad um the way the system works right now at this the point of this video is that if you get to level 10 you get uh, three skill points back if you had like let's say i'm gonna pull up an oxalot i recently <laughs> recently pulled another oxalot even though hold on actually no this one would be a better example still so uh, Oxlots in g most general cases, you only need the three skill points on the S2. Some people don't even enhance it. Some people don't enhance it. Um, but the issue was like before that friendship system came in place, uh, my Oxlots was already molded like this. Um, so when he got to level 10 friendship, I had three skill points left. I didn't know what to do. So I put it into the S3. But you, if you don't, uh, let me, let, let's, let's use this Oxlots for example now. So, for example, if I wanted to just do the S3 here, if I skill enhance and I use Molagora on it, um, I'm not going to get that 3 Molagora back. I know you're saying like, oh, 3 is not a big deal, but, oh, well, this is more than 3 actually. <laughs> it will take you, uh, so Friendship Level 10 will give you 3 of these, which are equivalent to Molagora, but they won't unlock until you're level 10. All right. So remember that this, these type of videos are kind of aimed towards like mid-game players, kind of pushing to the end game. Um, Anyways, uh, so this is not enough. You're going to have to spend two extra Mola if you get him to level 10. But the problem is if I skill enhance him right now before I hit level 10, when I get to level 10, I'm going to get these skill point things, but I'm not going to get my Mola Gora back. The only way that it will return a Mola Gora is if you, uh, l let's say RB, like he, he's a pretty popular one. Um, RB, if he, uh, you know, if you if you maxed him out at level ten, he'll actually, he'll actually refund the three friendship uh, skill enhancers into Molagora, but they have to be plus fifteen before that applies. All right. So in terms of like a non DPS, which generally non DPS don't need, um, you know, max uh, Molagora. Hold on, let me go with my Ruel. Ruel is also a really funny example. Um, I did not Mola her 
uh, until I got level friend 10 friendship <clears throat> because I wanted to be as efficient as possible in my Molagura. Now again, if you are struggling with Molagura, I definitely think that you should keep those things in mind. If you get a fresh hero, so at this point, uh, Politis is very, very new. Politis is a very new hero, so it depends on when you watch this video, it might not apply to you. Um, Politis, right away, I wanted to get the effect chance for the S3, and I know that when I get to level 10 friendship, I want to invest in the S1, alright? Um, I'm, I was thinking about a DPS one, but that's a story in and of itself. Uh, but I, I know that, okay, I looked at the skill enhancement and I planned it out. And I see that, okay, so for me to get the effect chance here at plus 4, I would need a total of 6 Molagura. If I get to level 10, uh, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3 are free, and I just need to spend an extra 3, okay? So if you do this before your level 10 friendship and you don't plan on plus 15, plus 15 her? Is that a word? Plus 15 -ing? Um... If you don't plan on maxing her, you're never going to see those Molagora back, okay? So that's why it's kind of min-maxing, and uh, you know, it will help in the long run. It will help in the long run. You think like, oh, three Molagora, you get that every week. But just think about that over time and compounding. It's just going to be very, very nice. So obviously, uh, friendship farming then becomes a very important thing. Like, how do you get your hero to be a usable state with this skill and has that you want to start bringing into maybe guild war uh arena or like rta um i don't think people prioritize pve heroes um so i'm just going to use those as the examples already you should know that uh, if you're farming for let's say uh ap points especially if you're free to play the thing is optimizing your energy right using as l as little energy as possible to do more things <clears throat> That optimization is always smart. So for example, if I'm uh, doing my guild weekly missions, if I'm just farming for catalyst, I need the AP, I just need the catalyst for a certain hero, then you know what you would usually do is, you wouldn't do this. Um, what you would usually do is one DPS, and ideally that DPS or that, uh, that farmer can also benefit from leveling friendship, ideally. And then you go with like a gold dog. Hold on, let me just quickly do this so as a visual representation and then maybe one fodder now everybody has a different style and I, i'm not gonna say that you know you have to follow this way um but this is what i usually like doing let's say for example i did build dps politis and i mean farming at a certain point farming like ap isn't going to be super difficult if you start farming uh, episode three though episode three is relatively difficult that like if you run even an rb a really strong rb um, you may not necessarily beat it unless your supporter friend here um, is really strong. Um, I, I've had a scenario like that before and uh, the, the friend that had like this really bad supporter, I removed him from my list because <laughs> I lost in episode 3. Anyways, Toxic Dragon. Um, I'm a realistic player. I'm a realistic player um, and also that, that friend ended up being like kind of like inactive too. So. I'm not gonna say who it is, but that person probably knows because you look at the list and like, wait a minute, I don't have Jagan anymore. Um, jokes aside, this is probably what you would do, right? Now the other thing would be like, okay, so farming uh, hunts, right? That's the biggest priority in this game. Um, this is honestly the the central core of this Epic Seven's game loop. So you you know get a new hero, you need gear now to compete to make them look good. Um, and then, you know, tons of avenues for us to like flex our builds, like on people's streams, on, on, you know, discord servers, on like Reddit and whatnot. Um, and people like showing their hard work or their R RNG, I guess. Um, but, uh, farming hunts is a very big one. So for example, just for Wyvern itself, himself, um, I've been farming some heroes in the past and I got them to level 10. Let me just bring this up, uh, friendship. And, uh, and this is one way to do it. And now I'm gonna give you guys a special tip. Um, I think it's the the thing that you know skyrocketed my friendship level tens the quickest um, after this. Okay. So usually it would be under blue heroes. So I'm just gonna only filter out blue heroes. So for example, in this one, cigarette. I used to use uh, General Purgus SSB. SSB had always been my one of my cores, and like you know from the beginning of uh, the Hunt 13s. Uh, and Alexa. And Tyranogard. That used to be my team, and it actually works. Um, and I do usually, you know, when I do account helps and stuff, and people ask about Wyvern teams, I'm like, don't, don't, don't start looking into investing into a five star 
gear roll because generally those accounts those players uh they don't they don't have the they don't have a lot of gear to move around so what it would be really easy is to min max using alexa and tyrannogard because their skill enhancement is technically free with stigma stigma and catalyst that's it uh and so therefore that kind of compensates for the lack of gear that they have so for example alexa's skill 30 percent more raw damage way easier to invest in than like someone like cigarette which you know takes a lot of molagoro to make a really strong um if they don't have the gear right so it used to be like tyranna guard um i've gone through a, a phase where i've used cerise on uh confile in the back line as my main defense breaker with ssb um and uh and for wyvern i generally level only one level 10 hero uh at a time it's just easier for me to do it for at least for wyvern because wyvern does take uh either you're not gonna really out sustain them you need to do high damage and high damage and quick um that's generally how you take it out um fairy tale tenebria i actually farmed in another hunt which i'll that's the i think that's the main core of this video um i'll talk about that in a sec uh furious i just recently got him to level 10 uh, and as you can see there, he's kind of working there. Uh, Yuna was already level 10 a long time ago. Luluka as well. She's a 5 star. I gave her the S1EE with Zero Ren. And uh, I, I don't plan to 6 star her, but I'm just like, okay, well, it's free, like, skill enhance. You know, I may as well do it in case maybe she gets a buff. Really, really useful in PvP in the future. Um, and I did that as well. She was my primary defense breaker. So the furious slot ended up being my kind of like go-to to like swap in like a new hero to friendship farm. So I did Luluka. I did Ceres there. Um, I think uh, I think that's pretty much it. Cigarette also was wasn't you know it, she wasn't like molded or whatever. I ended up replacing the Alexa for Cigarette once I got like some spare uh, uh, destruction set gear. And that's pretty much it. So like in the Wyvern section, I got like four heroes level ten. Um, it's pretty easy there. I think in the future, you, I just keep that in mind. Those, what you're looking for is rolls, right? You're either looking for a debuffer, a, ideally a defense breaker, um, and then high damage. Next one will probably be Chloe. I do have an ice Chloe somewhere. Um, that one will probably be the next one I, I look into, but I don't, I don't actually like her as a hero. <laughs> I might get a lot of hate for that. I don't like her as a hero in general. I don't like her voice. Um, it doesn't matter what language. It just sounds really obnoxious. That's why she's kind of on the back burner. Otherwise, Chloe is also a really good one. And it should make your team pretty easy. Um, you need some high damage gear though. And then DGJ. So Daydream Joker. Um, but, the, but the tip I want to give you guys. Honestly, what really, really accelerated my friendship farming is Azimanic. A13. If you're a mid game player and you are going to strive now to the end game, it is really funny. You know, you it's it's a thing where like higher end players, maybe it's like a looking down upon the lower end players right now. It's just like when you fight them in RTA, let's say they have a last rider crowd and it's not on immunity, it's just like Kek W. Um, but like in all seriousness, Azimatic is one of like the, I would say it is the end game farm. Like if you're a new player, stick to Wyvern and it doesn't matter if you're DPS or your Knights or whatever are on like, you know, a uh, speed set health set, speed set hit set, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Immunity definitely is the harder one. Um, I can make a separate video on that. Um, but if people just understand the gear drop and just like the RNG it takes to get good immunity gear, it's much harder than getting good gear dropping from wyvern therefore azimatic is generally like not super uh, i wouldn't recommend a new player farm azimatic i just feel that that's just like you know a very lack of efficiency and plus most of the time the heroes you bring into azimatic will be on gear that you would farm from wyvern so that, that there's that kind of like systematic uh you know order that you kind of want to follow anyways an azimatic what you really want to focus on and i would say that this tip this specific tip to level your friendship in azimatic you would need tamarine all right she remains to be one of the pve queens uh abyss expeditions i've seen now um and uh and farming uh she's one of the best uh in golem i've seen people use her as well in Banshee, not the one-shot type. In Banshee, I've seen her used as well, but Azimatic 100% uh, is like generally what people go to, unless you're doing the one-shot type. 
um, I don't do one shop as as a manic. I I what I do is that in the daytime I farm wyvern. In the nighttime when I'm sleeping, I let my team auto as a manic. Um, I will say though, if you are doing this method to farm as a manic, don't do it while you're awake, or at least don't do it while you care because it will take a long time. If you have a level four, uh, a four star pet, you can run this on auto 20 times. Honestly, 15, 20 times, it doesn't matter, but it's, let's say you got the pet. You got the pet and you can do it 20 times. 20 times on most of my friendship farming teams for Azimatic does take like roughly like four hours. Not, I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's not 100% guaranteed. It depends on the comp you use, but I wanted to showcase like some of the ways I do it. So basically, in Azimatic, what you want is to avoid too many debuffs. So you don't want to, you got to plan it out. You got to really know the heroes that you're bringing in. Um, ideally, uh, low enough debuffs. If you have some debuffs, it's fine. You can't exceed three. You ideally don't want to have too many buffs as well. You ideally don't want to exceed three. Um, you ideally want Tamarine. Like I said, this will work the best with Tamarine. I don't think any other healer can do what she does here. Um, she can strip, she can cleanse, she can attack, buff CR boost, double attack, and then her turn cycling is good. Um, you need someone to strip buffs from uh, Azimanic. So generally, I would say a mage on Violin is a really good one to use. All right, so take notes here. Take notes um, is really good. I would suggest, in terms of the Purgus slot here, I would suggest a knight on Aureus. It doesn't matter what knight. I've always, I've also been leveling like so many knights. I'll go through like the entire list of my of my friendship heroes, level ten, and then just go through like what I've used. And you'll got, you guys will get begin to see if you guys haven't done this already. You'll begin to see why this sort of works. And then the last thing, the last rule you need is an AOE DPS. All right, AOE DPS. It has to, they have to, you have to kill the eggs pretty much simultaneously. Um, otherwise, it becomes a big, big problem. So right now, as you see here, I am leveling Politus' friendship because, again, as I explained about the Molagora there, I want that S1 to be at plus four. I am leveling Purgus. He seems to be pretty good in the meta right now in RTA for some counter drafting. And then Kisei, because I actually ran out of DPS to, to level, like in terms of friendship level. Um, and she's pretty close. She's at friendship level nine. I'll show the builds. Um, I'll show the builds first. And then I'll, uh, I don't even want to demo the run because it's not, it's going to take forever, but hopefully you guys can picture it. It's not a hundred percent win rate. Just keep that in mind. It's not hundred percent win rate. And I do believe that you can only get the friendship level if you win or beat that certain thing. Okay. Uh, I'll show you the builds of those heroes first. Um, and just to see like, you know, what kind of, what kind of stats you need. So this Purgus I'm planning to use in RTA scenarios. Um, ideally, actually you want to have this, I'm actually going to take off the Draco plate. It doesn't really benefit him here. You want days of destiny. You want this artifact. Now for those who joined the game a bit late, uh, or have been AFK from the game, I don't know if you will get this artifact. Um, this was a specifically like an event sort of artifact. Um, so uh, this is very 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 good um it it uh changes the amount of friendship farming you need by a hundred percent in terms of so it has it has the amount of runs you need to do if you running if you're running hunt for a friend like for a hero to get from friendship level one so from the from the start to friendship level 10 to hit it you need 1500 runs 1000 500 runs this will have it 750 so i'm gonna put that on purgus because actually he doesn't need that draco plate not for the farming run um so basically i wasted my evening last night <laughs> farming without uh without better efficiency but uh you can usually if you have tamarine and you go with the rolls i've set out aoe dps strip and avoid too many debuffs and avoid too many buffs um usually damage mitigation with purgus's you're going to be able to level three heroes at a time while farming a hunt so better gold efficiency um put potential gear drops and then crafting materials for crafting end game gear 
that is to me a, a gold mine if you have not done this i would definitely suggest you do it i know a lot of people are doing the one shot a13 hunt in my opinion unless you're a whale and you have infinite resources to spend and you don't care about your weekly refreshes let's say arena skystone refresh or like events that give out leaves and stuff like that use all of that into wyvern farming that would still be your priority but if you are like you want to have a slow grinding hunt do a13 do it the way i do you're gonna have a lot of efficiency um i said i was gonna show the build right yeah um i showed general progress i guess when i swapped the artifact i show you kisei really quick um this is gear that i had uh before free equip uh free equip event was over um i just like i just swapped this on rnl so she turns cycles faster just to kill the egg she could kill it without um uh an attack buff from tamarine so it doesn't matter if she shakes off the attack buff from tamarine at least in my team um so it's just like more more aoe so ideally you want more aoe than this uh, she was molded and that's why i'm trying to friendship farming here and then a politis. so originally as well in one of my original teams i ran politis as dps to level her to level 60 i ran her and bbk all of them need friendship farming now i swap back politics because i couldn't get to the dps build i want to use for rta while being satisfied with all the stats i wanted um that will come maybe in the next free equip event um but i violin violin so definitely definitely get this um you can get this in hall of trials if you're kind of new you don't have violin you can get this in hall of trials you can pick it up definitely the higher the enhancement the the higher the proc rate to dispel uh definitely needed uh politics already can dispel with the uh with the s2 and azimatic does have a non non-attack skill or no not not azimatic but the eggs do the eggs have a non-attack skill so she can proc this she can technically dispel uh or reduce the buff by one turn uh but violin on your mage all right so let me go through like the full the full roster of heroes that had level 10 friendship from purely farming azimatic 13 all right from the beginning i had ravi ravi frontline and if she's tanky she'll be able to cycle her s3 really quick and uh she'll do enough damage to do aoe pretty much constantly you know so uh just kind of know the hero mechanic so she was done in azimatic there Roz doesn't matter because it's a three star uh charlotte was done in raid uh kron was already level 10 ten, ten tenebria here fire tenebria also in azimatic Technically, she does too many debuffs. He can't go to sleep, but she does death break and an, uh, a, a speed down, which both can affect A13. Um, ideally, on a Tika Scepter, so she cycles it quicker. Um, if you have the speed down on him, it's actually really good. You turn cycle him like crazy, and then uh, and you keep the defense break up. Um, so it depends on who you pair uh, Fire Tenebri with. And the Tamarine, like I said, has to be... I, I think she's the only he hero that really works there. Um, if anyone else can run this and you know we want to experiment with another healer or something like that definitely leave it in the comments down below it's going to be useful for other people it's going to be useful for me if i can advise other players in the future um but i think tamarine so far is the most consistent i tried running ruel on touch of Rekos. she got owned like tamarine just is just better in general uh let's see here which other ones rose okay so rose i got level 10 friendship also from azimatic so she was my knight in one of my runs she was my knight uh aureus holder and she does attack buff and cr boost and stuff like that uh sometimes though i do end up running into too many buffs uh especially on rose like if she puts the barrier on herself and she has a defense buff from her s1 and then she has an attack buff um uh, azimatic strips all buffs uh, so just be careful of that. Um, Sirius and stuff like that I ran into. Uh, Dizzy, Dizzy, a long time ago, I got her level 10. Uh, but that was before they implemented the skill enhancement thing. But I did it in Azimatic as well. She was my violin holder. So you can see that it would be really good to do that. Uh, Fairy Tail Tenebria as well. Um, she was my violin holder to get level 10. Very, very quick. It was very quick. Um, uh, let's see here. Who else? Alencia as well. I got her level 10 through Azimatic. She was my she was my defense breaker and AoE damage dealer. Um, so <laughs> that was a really interesting run. Um and I also put her in the front line. But I had an Orius holder in the back line. So that she always got well, she got higher chance to proc mind's eye, and then S1 defense break, extra damage, and then uh 
cooldown cycle for the S3 so she gets this back quicker. So again, it's just the understanding that uh, the mechanics, uh, Charles was always level 10. Um, Celine wasn't level 10 there. Landy, also level 10 through Azimanic. Um, again, turn cycling really good, CR boost, speed buff, and then you got AoE when they got buffs. Um, which Azimanic always pumps himself up with buff. So uh, very, very good. Landy was a really quick one to level there. Pavel as well, leveled there. Azimanic, Basar, level 10. Azimanic, he was a violin holder. Vivian was already level 10 because I ran her with Banshee one shot a long time ago. Purgus is self-explanatory. Kisei as well, level 10. Because also, although I, I have the skill enhancements right here. Um, I'm not going to plus 15 here though. I'm not. Um, yeah, sure. Well, I'll just add one. May as well, right? <laughs> live, live demo. So I did it as well, um, and uh, I, I changed her build to have a speed boot. So she turns cycle faster, so she get more AOE for killing the eggs again. If you want it on full auto, you need to kill the eggs. Uh, Little Queen Charlotte, I I also leveled to level 10, also an Azimanic. Um, because her splash damage onto Azimanic, thankfully he's dark. Uh, after her dev buffs, her splash damage can kill the eggs in one shot. So I did that as well. Ambitious Time on a very, very good night to level 10 in Azimanic. Um, if he tries to silence you or whatever, he cleanses it. It depends on your speed, of course. Um, and then he does speed down and he can't be stunned. So then that's one debuff you don't need to worry about. Uh, Last Rider Crow as well, farmed in Azimanic. Uh, very, very good. You got the immunity buff, and then you got, like, uh, Azimatic does a lot of AoE. So the cooldown cycling for uh, uh, Last Rider Crow, very easy. Tempest Surin, also level 10 through that. Uh, Ath Athletica, level 10 through that as well. So you can see that, um, that you know, you, you're getting the point. Um, Athletica, the strip, and then the CR boost. She turn cycles really quick on her own. The blind debuff, you just gotta be careful about the uh, blind debuff. And I did have her on a con file. Roman as well, level 10 through Azimanic with Violin, and that did re really good. Sage Ball and Cezanne uh, as well. Um, uh, Blaze Dingo, I don't know, Blaze Dingo wasn't, no, Blaze Dingo wasn't. Ruel was not uh, in Azimanic, that is. Uh, RB, I did. RB, I got him quite late into the game. Um, it was around the time they had the friendship farming. I had him about like level 8. I was still farming him no matter what though, like when I was farming fodder and stuff. Level 8, but I think it, it, it pushed to level 10 once the uh, once I saw that, oh the skill enhanced thing, um, let's let's get a quick. Remnant Violet, I also farmed him in Azimatic, but I had a really good team like AoE, I forgot what the exact team was, I, I think it was the one with like Last Rider Crow. So basically I had AoE not because of Remnant Violet, um, I had AoE other, other AoE sources while I had a tank. So, um, you want to keep those things in mind. Uh, Operator Cigarette, how did I get her to level 10? She's actually really far along. It's not Azimatic. I remember I never used her in Azimatic. Uh, Champions of Rotto was actually not Azimatic. Uh, Spectani was Azimatic on uh, Violin as well. Since she can hit two targets and then she's a mage. Uh, the Poison is also really good on him, although sometimes you do exceed the amount of debuffs recommended on him which is two max three he cleanses and hits you again so um uh but but on violin she's very solid the poison damage though kills azimatic really quick so if you have a new spec tenny um i definitely recommend that uh, i think that's pretty much it in terms of the ones i care about so you can see that uh i, I don't know if you keep track on when the the friendship thing was implemented it's a couple months now it's been a couple months I've gotten a lot of level 10 heroes um, just from Azimatic alone. The other ones are just like the other farming or uh, stuff like that. Um, and, other, and other things like in case you don't know is that every almost every part of the game does allow you to gain friendship points. Mostly at a different like you know different rate. Uh, raid and hell raid um, because you can camp for the morale you get the most out of those um, hollow trials you can also get them but it's for hollow trials one is way too long and then the second thing is although it's infinite entries the second thing is just like it takes way too long and then just you know like are you gonna really waste your time there in my opinion don't waste your time just because you want to save energy to farm friendship level doing hollow trials do what i do i think an azimatic is just the most bang for buck 
three heroes getting friendship level 10 while farming again for end game gear and game crafting materials um and then the best use of your energy for gold when it comes to hunts and you know when else are you going to farm azimanic unless you're farming like you know you don't want to farm wyvern or banshee uh so that's that's what i do automaton tower also gives you friendship um while doing it and i think uh guild ward as well guild war arena for sure i think rta as well but i'm not 100 percent sure about that um since i i wasn't playing much rta uh last season anyways that's my that's my main thing the main thing is azimanic to me that's been the biggest game changer if the other tips helped you in terms of like optimizing which heroes you bring uh to the you know like call the trials or whatever just keep those things in mind that even if you don't see the friendship ticker thing go up um it's not that it's not happening it is happening i actually tested the uh automaton tower one myself i brought in a level like those the monsters the fodder they're like you know they start at level one they start at level one nothing went into one floor came out and i saw it, it did go up the gauge so uh just apply these things and hopefully it will be uh more efficient for you and uh hopefully yeah, these tips will be be helpful anyways like i said this will be the end of uh this episode of tips and change on friendship farming if you guys have any suggestions that you need help on uh let me know again in the comments down below and uh, i will look into making the video for you all right so for the video recording i'm going to end this here if you guys have discord check out the discord server follow me on twitter subscribe to youtube if you haven't as always thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys next time